Hello there. In this video, I'm going to talk about the Dover Court streetcar. It's one of those streetcars that is quite important to the city, yet when you think about the road that it runs on, it's kind of interesting that the streetcar itself actually existed at all. But anyways, let's get into the video. The story of the Dover Court streetcar begins in 1888. At this time, as it is today, Dover Court Road was a quiet residential street. However, unlike today, the road was also near the edge of the city of Toronto at the time. Service on Dover Court Road began on September 24, 1888 with horse-drawn cars operated by the Toronto Street Railway. This route was named Dover Court via McCall and operated from Monday to Saturday. The route operated from a loop via Church Street, Front Street, and Frederick Street, and west along King Street to York Street. From there, the route traveled north to Queen Street and west to McCall Street. Heading north on McCall, the route then ran west along College Street to newly installed tracks on Dover Court Road. From there, the route would travel north to a crossover at Bluer Street. In 1891, the Toronto Street Railway Company's charter expired and so it was replaced with the Toronto Railway Company. The TRC would continue to operate the Dover Court via McCall streetcar as is until September 5, 1892 when the route was revised. This revision would see the route follow a similar route along King Street, Church Street and Front Street. However, the route would now weigh at Frederick Street instead of following it north back to King Street like it used to. Now, the route would double back on itself at Frederick Street and follow Front Street to York Street. From there, the route would run north to Queen Street and then follow its old route back to Bluer Street. This new route would replace a portion of the old Danforth College via McCall Streetcar, and so service on the route was increased to compensate for this. The route would be revised again sometime in March of 1893 with the route now running north on Frederick Street to King Street and then following King Street to York Street. By 1893 the TRC had begun converting its streetcar network over to electric trolleys, replacing the old horse-drawn cars. The first route to be upgraded was the Church Streetcar. On October 30th, 1893, the Carleton College Streetcar was converted to electric car operation. By this time, the Dover Court via McCall Streetcar was following its previously mentioned route, although the route was now looping via Church Street instead of Frederick Street. This would mean, though, that the stretch of track on College Street between McCall and Dover Court would see both electric cars and horse-drawn cars operating on the same track. There is some opposition to this idea, though, with transit historian John F. Bromley saying, and quote, it's almost beyond belief that Dover Court via McCall horse cars would continue the operation of the lengthy stretch of track between Dover Court and McCall. The delays to the new electric cars would have greatly impacted service reliability on Carleton and College. Experience with Brockton horse cars being drawn downtown by Queen Cars during electrification work on Dundas suggests that it was possible that Dover Court via McCall horse cars were probably drawn behind College and Carleton electric cars from Dover Court to McCall as trailers from October 10, 1893 to May 4, 1894. Or, to simplify the idea, while on College Street, the Dover Court via McCall cars would be linked to the electric Carleton College cars and drawn along the street as trailer cars until they reach their respective turnoff points, be it Dover Court Road or McCall Street. There, the trailer cars would be broken off from the electric cars and linked up to the horses to, for continued service along the route. On May 4, 1894, service on the Dover Court via McCall streetcar would come to an end as electrification work began on the route. The route would be split into two horse-drawn shuttle routes, with one of those being the Dover Court shuttle which operated along Dover Court Road between College and Bloor. This route would be switched over to a single electric car on June 1st when electrification of this portion of track was completed. The other route was the McCall Shuttle which operated two horse-drawn cars along McCall Street from College Street to Queen Street. Electrification of this portion of track would be completed on July 18th, 1894 and with it the last horse-drawn cars in Toronto would be taken out of service for good. 
The Dover Court shuttle would continue to operate until September 29, 1894, when it was merged with the Carleton College streetcar and became a branch of that line. For a brief time, between June 22nd and August 24th of 1895, the route was broken off from the Carleton College streetcar and became a shuttle again, although it would still bear the name Carleton College. This would change on September 16th, 1895, when the Dover Court name was brought back. This route would replace the old College and Young streetcar and operate Monday to Saturday. The Dover Court streetcar would operate from away at Bluer Street along Dover Court Road to College. The route would then run east on College Street to Ossington Avenue, and then south from there to away at Queen Street. On May 23, 1897, Sunday service would begin on the route. On July 23, 1897, the Dover Court streetcar would be extended north from Bluer Street to away at DuPont Street, although at the time DuPont Street was called Van Horn. One year later, on May 1st, 1898, Sunday service was discontinued. It would then be reinstated two years later on January 28th, 1900. On February 14th, 1902, the Dover Court streetcar would be extended east along Queen Street to Shaw Street and then from there south to away at King Street. This extension would prove to be a boon for the Dover Court streetcar as it brought the route to the doorstep of the large Massey Harris Company's factory that was located at 915 King Street West. The Massey Harris plant manufactured agricultural equipment and was, at the time, one of the largest manufacturers of agricultural equipment in the British Empire. The company still exists today as Massey Ferguson, although the plant on King Street is long gone, save for one original building at 915 King Street West. With the plant employing hundreds of workers, Dover Court found itself as one of the few lines that didn't operate into downtown Toronto. Ridership on the line was high enough that the TRC would double track the route between Bloor and DuPont in June of 1906. Night service on the route would begin on the same day. Around this time, the Dover Court streetcar would see itself diverted to serve areas left underserved due to the diversions caused by the Canadian National Exhibition. The Dover Court streetcar itself would become a route to the exhibition on August 28, 1906, with cars being diverted to Dufferin Loop via Queen Street and Dufferin Street. This service would operate Monday to Saturday after 8.10 a.m. and would be repeated again for the 1907 and 1908 exhibitions. On August 30, 1909, the route diversion to the exhibition would be changed to have Dover Court streetcars operate to Dufferin Loop via King Street instead of Queen Street. This would ensure continued service to the Massey Harris factory as well as the exhibition. This would happen before 8.10 a.m. in the mornings and between 5 and 6.30 p.m. in the evenings. At all other times, service would follow the old diversion along Queen Street. On September 1, 1921, the Toronto Transportation Commission would take over streetcar operations from the Toronto Railway Company. At first, the Dover Court streetcar remained unchanged. The TTC, however, would continue to provide a special service to the Canadian National Exhibition until 1941, when the exhibition was put on hiatus due to World War II. This service would be given the name Dover Court Exhibition and would return for one last year in August of 1947 before being abolished. On November 1, 1923, the TTC would launch the Dover Court Tripper, which followed the Dover Court streetcar to King Street. However, the route would continue along King Street to Church Street, looping via Church Street, Front Street, and George Street before following its route back to DuPont Street. The TTC would extend the Dover Court streetcar north from its terminus at DuPont Street to away at Davenport Road on December 5, 1923. It was on this day that the TTC and the City of Toronto negotiated the takeover of the Toronto Suburban Railway Company's holdings in Toronto. At this time, the TSR operated multiple local routes, including the Davenport Streetcar. On January 20th, 1924, the Dover Court Streetcar was once again extended. This extension would see the route run west along Davenport Road and north on Old Weston Road to Townsley Loop, one block north of St. Clair Avenue. 
at this time, the TTC had double-tracked the line along Davenport Road. While the Dovercourt streetcar now went to Townsley Loop, the various Dovercourt tripper cars still terminated at a way on Davenport Road. The reason for the extension really came down to topography. Dovercourt Road ends at Davenport Road. This is due to the steep elevations in the area caused by the shoreline of the ancient Lake Iroquois. Since the Dovercourt streetcar already operated into or around downtown Toronto, it became the main route for moving commuters from northwestern Toronto into downtown. On the other hand, Bathurst Street to the east also extended north of Davenport Road. Since the TTC did not wish to duplicate service on Bathurst Street, the Davenport streetcar was reduced to a mere shuttle service, while the Dovercourt streetcar took over the western end of its route. You can watch my video on the Davenport streetcar to learn more about this. On October 26, 1924, tracks were installed along Adelaide and Crawford streets to allow the Dovercourt streetcar to loop around the area instead of having to weigh on King Street. At this time, the Dovercourt streetcar utilized old TRC rolling stock, and specifically two-man cars, which had an operator and a conductor. This would change on March 1st, 1925, when one-man cars were introduced on non-tripper runs and then all runs on May 1st. Peter Witt cars would debut on the line on January 22nd, 1929, and only on Sundays at first. The first PCC cars would enter service on the line on October 1st, 1942, replacing the Witt cars for night service. From September 9th, 1928 to October 29th, 1931, the Dovercourt streetcar was extended east along St. Clair Avenue to a loop at Prescott Avenue. This was done to provide service west of the railway tracks at Caledonia Road. Once an underpass had been built, service on the Dovercourt streetcar returned to Townsley Loop. With the onset of World War II, works at the Massey plant ramped up and with it so did service on the Dovercourt streetcar. New tripper cars were introduced with the Dovercourt tripper now starting from Townsley Loop and following its normal route, although by now the tripper service looped via Sherburne Street and not Church Street. Dovercourt tripper cars would however not return to Townsley Loop on their return trip but instead weigh at Davenport Road like normal. On February 23, 1945, tripper service was expanded further with new services being introduced. Four morning tripper cars, the Arendelle trippers, would continue beyond Sherburn Street to Arendelle Loop, which is today's Broadview Station. The cars would follow King Street, Queen Street, and Broadview Avenue. Two morning cars, the Sunnyside Arendelle Tripper, would operate west on King Street and Queensway to Sunnyside Loop. From there, the cars would then run all the way back to Arendelle Loop via King Street and then back to Davenport Road. These Sunnyside Arendelle Tripper cars would operate until April 20th, 1945. Arendelle Tripper cars would continue to operate until March 1st, 1947. This service would be replaced by an extension of the Dovercourt Tripper to Arendelle Loop via Parliament and Girard Streets. Return service, however, would operate down Broadview Avenue to Queen Street. After World War II, commuter patterns began to shift in Toronto and the TTC began asking themselves if a streetcar service in this part of the city was still necessary. And if it was, was it the best allocation of its resources? As well, the shortage of supplies caused by the war meant that there was a lot of deferred maintenance in the system as well as extra wear and tear on the tracks due to the increased service levels. The tracks along Dovercourt between Bloor and College were in need of replacing at this time particularly. Around this time, as well, a new technology was being shown to various cities around Canada, including Toronto, that technology being the trolley bus. The TTC saw potential in the idea as they could provide service without the cost of having to install tracks. As well, they could put it into areas that no longer warranted streetcar service, but also already had the necessary overhead catenary infrastructure. By this time as well, Dovercourt Road's importance had waned and now Ossington Avenue had developed into a major north-south street in the area. 
Looking at the situation, the TTC decided that operating a trolley bus along Ossington between Davenport and Queen Street would be better than a streetcar, and so they began stringing wires along Ossington in late 1947. Service on the Dovercourt streetcar and Dovercourt tripper would come to an end on December 8, 1947, ending 59 years of service. The Dovercourt streetcar would be the second line to be replaced by trolley buses. Service on Dovercourt Road did not disappear entirely though, as Harbord streetcars were taken off of Ossington Avenue north of Bloor and rerouted up Dovercourt Road to follow the now gone Dovercourt streetcars route to Townsley Loop. Service would operate as such until February 25th, 1966 when the Harbord streetcar was abolished. With this, 78 years of streetcar service on Dovercourt Road would come to an end and in fact, all transit along Dover Court Road would end. Dover Court Road would be without transit until March 14, 1988, when a branch of the 94 Wellesley bus was routed down Dover Court from Hallam Street. On February 13, 1994, the 161 Rogers Road bus would bring transit back to Dover Court Road between Bloor and Davenport, with this bus route still operating today. That said, however, transit along Dover Court between Bloor and Queen Street has never returned. Tracks and poles along Dover Court Road between Bloor and College remained for many years, even though they were now inactive. When the Bloor Danforth subway opened, however, the tracks along Dover Court were finally torn up and paved over. Today, nothing remains of the Dovercourt streetcar, on Dovercourt Road at least. Tracks still remain on Shaw Street between Queen Street and King Street. As well, tracks still remain on McCall Street. Both Shaw Street and McCall Streets were important to the Dovercourt streetcar at one point or another. It's hard to find a way in which the Dovercourt streetcar survives into today though. Not only was the route low ridership, but there was also a question of where would it go? Dovercourt Road lies in between Ossington and Dufferin stations, so unless one proposes a diversion of the Dovercourt car to one of these stations, the route would lack a connection to Line 2. A connection to Line 1, while possible, would also have no easy way of looping a line on a King Street alignment. The only possible alignment would be a loop via Church Street, Richmond, Victoria, and Adelaide. In my opinion, any possible recreation of the Dovercourt streetcar would not be as an independent route, but as an extension of a recreated Dufferin streetcar. This route would follow the northern portion of the old Dovercourt streetcar route, although this time starting at either Guns Loop on St. Clair or Townsley Loop if you convert it back for streetcar use. The route would travel via Davenport and Dovercourt to Bloor Street, then it would jog west to Dufferin Avenue and run south to Dufferin Loop, making an on-street connection to Dufferin Station and Line 2. To me, this is the only conceivable way the Dovercourt streetcar could come back, and even then it would only be the northern portion of the old route and as part of a Dufferin streetcar. The portion of the old route south of Bloor and on Shaw Street is to me too out of the way of anything to be incorporated into any sort of route. While you can make the case for streetcar service on Dufferin Street south of Bloor, and it has been made, would the service along Dovercourt and Davenport be viable? That section of the line would be without question the least used in comparison to the section along Dufferin Street. Perhaps the Dovercourt streetcar is simply untenable today without either the acceptance that part of the route would be low use or the route following a nonsensical route through downtown Toronto. Either way though, this is where I will end the video. Thank you for watching this video, and if you enjoyed it and want to see more like it, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, because there are more videos like it on my channel, and I have more videos like it on the way. If there's anything you want to say about the Dover Court Streetcar, don't be afraid to do so in the comments down below. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.